Okay, as you can see, I have many distractions today. Uh, I'm a big fan of space flight and uh, have been uh, since I, I was a kid. And <laughs> I remember building those Atlas rockets and hanging them from my ceiling. Am I wearing my headphones? That's funny. <laughs> I was watching it and uh, trying to do it at the same time and I thought, no, I need to make, some, make Mike's video. So I'm gonna get started. And if you haven't seen part one, it's cool. You can go back and watch it, but uh, let's see. Let's go to front elevation. Oh, and I still need to, let's turn off that. Let's get this in a perspective mode here. And let's turn off that roof. What I did was put this two by six that's here. It's gonna probably have to be ripped down depending on what that height is. Let me turn these trusses off and we'll look at that. So this will just be a, a member that's probably ripped down again that is used to close that area off. Plus also we're gonna to need to allow uh, for some siding to be installed on across the front of this thing. So I think what the best thing to do is just to push this back to here. Also um, have one that goes from here. to over here. That one probably should be doubled. But what we can do there is just let it be nailed to the back of this one, I think. Let's see. I didn't really mean to do that. I mean to like that. That'll stabilize that. And we'll talk about these uh, braces here in a second as soon as I get this worked out. So you'll have to just kind of keep in mind when you're doing this, all these little laps that you got to have to allow other members to come to this. And you know, if you had to take a sawzall or something and cut it, cut one of them short, cut it out, it's no big deal if you forget. But Reviewing this, I would review the video when you get ready to do these phases and that will help you remember. So let's turn the trusses back on here. Root truss. And this bracing, let's see if I can get it to where you can see it. This is a purlin. Now you might get you might get a bracing detail from your truss company, and you usually will, but this is a minimum. You're going to want to run a 2 4 flat on top of your trusses right in the middle. And what you can do is put layout marks on it, and that'll make your trusses, you know, on the bottom cord uh, on two foot center. I can't get to a view, a decent view here. But uh, when, you're, when you're setting these trusses, it's, the bottom cords are kind of flimsy. You know, trusses are kind of flimsy until you get them all braced off, and then they're really... As a system, they're really strong, but individually, you'll notice that the bottom cords, if I go down here and just look up, they'll all be kind of wanky, you know, be crooked and back and forth. But that purling is going to help uh, keep them straight and on layout. And then, of course, these angle braces give your whole roof uh, lateral bracing back and forth. I've actually, I've literally seen uh, roof, uh, whole roof systems lay over from wind where people set the trusses and they forgot to brace them off the day, you know, that day and come back the next day and all the trusses are laying over. So these, these angle braces on both ends will prevent that from happening. And then of course, these braces at the top are just two befores that you've laid out and and what you'll do is they have layout marks on them too right so what you'll do is you'll stand your first truss up truss up your house line truss and you'll brace it well <laughs> you, normally what we do is we temporarily brace it off out here to the ground 
And then once we get a few trusses up and we can start putting these other braces in, we, then we put the angle brace. Uh, but you want to get this nice and plumb before, you know, you nail off this brace. But these upper braces on the top are just two befores that you've laid out on two foot center. You know, they've got two foot center marks on them. And as you stand the trusses up, uh, now that you've got this in one plumb, you can basically just put these on two foot center, but those this becomes a brace and a layout assistance uh, assistant too. So you can just see you're taking pieces of two before, you know, eight, 10 foot pieces and uh, putting them up there and kind of zigzagging them back and forth because you're putting up, you know, as you go down and you put more trusses up, you will need more and more two before as you go. And you can just kind of, these lapped ones are where you're starting the layout over on your two before. You can just put it flush. And then that means your next mark will be where your next truss goes. So it's easy to do. It's just uh, something you have to think about and plan ahead for. And that's what this process is all about. So that's that. And it's funny, these are the fascia boards <laughs> that are turned on. And why don't we have all of our roof sheeting? Uh, roof framing, okay, I had the roof for, they call that roof framing. And then of course, our roof sheeting, OSB. And um, then our roof, roofing, of course, our roof, metal roof, roof, metal roof. And this is a metal roof that I have drawn. It's a 5V10 that I think looks really good in Galvaloon. And I'm not sure why that, it looks blue. <laughs> Let's see why that is. Hmm. Let's uh, see if we can fix that right quick. That looks odd. Hmm, that ain't right. There we go. That was weird. Yeah, that's right. That's correct, Bob. All right. And what else? All right, so I think I'm ready to make a final thought, a final recommendation uh, on this truss issue. And I think the simplest thing to do is just to let the truss company build a standard uh, dropped truss, what we call a house line truss or a gable end truss, just like this that's shown. It's got the vertical nailing members in it. Uh, and the reason for that is because if you don't, you're going to have to order a truss, a regular truss that has the vertical nailing members in it. You can't you know, this opening, this area here is too big uh, to put sheeting on, you know, and siding without nailers. So I, ha I have a solution I think will work fine for this, uh, this configuration of these containers. And really all it is, is, I'm going to turn off these trusses, taking a, um, an LVL, get yourself an 18 inch LVL. And let's see, I had that hatch here somewhere. Okay, so what that means is, is that this one, and I'm gonna show you 12.5. Where'd my line go? I think it comes up six inches. Okay. So this is going to be one way to take care of this and we're going to take this purlin and move it back a little bit. To there. And so, I mean, you can talk to your trust company or whoever about this, but I would be pretty confident in getting a 16 foot LVL 
that's 18 inches wide and just cutting five and a half inches off of it using that for the front part and then using the taller part for the back and that would come and it would be you know sitting on top like that it would, it would lap you need a couple of two or three inches of bearing for these things so these other ones would be cut back these going back this way would be cut back three and a half inches okay because two lbls inch and three quarter lbls are uh three and a half inches so i think that makes more sense because uh, that keeps the roof system simple i know you're thinking no it doesn't it makes it complicated but the reason it makes it simple is because if i can find my roof truss then your roof trusses get just stay uh stay easy right uh you could send you could send this uh, truss plan to any truss manufacturer and they're not going to concern themselves at all with all this mess with putting these you know on top of these containers uh, and and again the main point here is i stated this in the last video these house line trusses are not load bearing they rely on a continuous bearing and so that's why we're going to take an 18 inch lbl we're going to rip this part off of it we're going to cut this part off that's here whatever this height is which i think is five and a half inches and then you're going to put the rest of it behind it and then what you're going to do is bolt you know run screws run some three inch screws at each of these points into that lbl and now you've got your load bearing condition across that 14 feet because 14 feet is quite a bit of a span for a roof and uh, and then what i'll do is i'll show that on the other end also spacex dragon you're cleared back on board copy all thanks a lot and dragon spacex when you have a minute i'd like to sync up with you on the media event We uh, are available. Let's uh, talk about it. Okay, so if you have the PDF open, I've got a couple of sections of talking points. I was thinking that you could get through a couple of those sections if you have a preference.